was an enormously successful science fiction film about a young boy that develops a close friendship with a marooned alien. The same year as the release of the movie, 1982 to be exact, Atari released a video game based off of it for the 2600. It's widely regarded as one of the worst games of all time, has a tag for being a major contributor to the video game crash of 83, even to the point where its sales fell under expectations so much that urban legend states that thousands of copies were buried in a landfill in New Mexico. But is it really that bad? Let's see, but first let's look at the objective. You'll control E.T. right after his spaceship lands and accidentally abandons him, with the goal of exploring various screens to find three pieces of a phone to contact his alien buddies and go back to his home planet. The number at the bottom of the screen is your score and also acts as your life meter. It'll drain when you walk, teleport, and when you fall down one of these godforsaken pits as well as float back up to the surface. Once you run out, you'll lose a life and Ellie has to come to revive you. After you lose three lives, it's game over. Adding to your struggles is an FBI agent and a scientist who appears throughout the game and tries to get after you. If the scientist gets to you, he'll drag you to his lab, which really does nothing more than interrupt your progress. The agent is a lot more annoying. He'll take away a piece of the phone if you found any, and if you don't have any, he'll take away your Reese's pieces. The Reese's pieces are scattered throughout various screens. Once you get nine, you can call Elliot and he'll hand you a piece of the phone. But you can only call him when the game tells you you can. At the top of the screen, an icon will be displayed and pressing the fire button will extend E.T.'s head and activate that icon's function. If it's one of these arrows, it will teleport you to the screen that the arrow is pointing. The question mark will show you if any pit on the screen has a phone piece by flashing for a second. This circle with the dot in the middle will allow you to replenish some health by eating a Reese's piece. This logo in the shape of the scientist's lab will send an enemy off the screen. This one of a person talking will allow you to call Elliot like I mentioned earlier, and the phone will let you call out to E.T. spaceship. And once it does, you have a limited amount of time to find the launching pad on the forest screen where you originally landed and the ship will come and pick you up, ending the game. Providing, of course, that you don't get picked off by one of these assholes in the process. If these guys get overly irritating, you can play one of the other variations. Game 1 has both of them, Game 2 has only the FBI agent, and Game 3 has neither of them. So what's all the fuss about? It seems like a decent game on paper, so where does it fail? Well, first off, the game is fucking impossible to follow without the manual. Without knowing what the icons at the top of the screen represent, you'll just wander around picking up foam pieces and Reese's pieces and not knowing what the hell to do with them. Meanwhile, you're getting chased by these pricks and falling down a freaking army of these pits. The pits are all over the place. You fall into them really easily thanks to the questionable hit detection, and a lot of times you'll cross screens and fall into one because a pit is connected to the border of the screen. What the hell? The pits are single-handedly the biggest problem with the game. There are far too many, they're too big in size a lot of the time, and they're so boring and monotonous you'll fall in, land, and then slowly float your way back up. And oh yeah, you'll fall right back into the same pit if you don't adjust yourself on the way out. Seems like E.T.'s feet trigger the fall down the pit more than anything else, because if you continue to move the joystick up, you'll fall back in. If you move down after surfacing, you'll end up back on land. Another annoyance is falling down the pit via teleportation. I guess they expect you to memorize the map and know whether or not the spot you're on will lead you to a fall. The high number of these pits make avoiding them all the more difficult when running away from these assholes, who just so happen to show up all the freaking time too. Not to mention that if you fall down a pit while trying to get away from them, you'll find them waiting for you as soon as you get out. Sometimes I just say fuck it and let them take my Reese's pieces or drag my ass to the lab. I don't care as long as I don't lose a piece of the phone. So yeah, the pits are true to their name. Along with some glitchy programming, they're easily the biggest problem with the game. That and the fact that there's really not a high fun factor level in walking around, falling down holes, trying to find pieces to a phone in some twisted scavenger hunt while constantly having to hit a roadblock by avoiding a pair of jackoffs that want to kidnap you or steal your candy. The real reason why so many people hate it at the level that they do is that they have no clue what to do. I did the same thing. When I was about five, my cousin donated a shitload of Atari games to me when he had no more use for them. All the games were loan cartridges with no instructions, so I just did what everyone else did. I wandered around, fell down a bunch of pits, sometimes I'd get the phone on pure luck, but I didn't know how the hell to use it. And for years, I wondered what the hell all those icons up top meant. 
The confusion mixed with the poor execution of the gameplay leads many to conclude that this game is an abomination. Combine that with the fact that the game was super hyped led it to be a huge letdown, causing it to be a contributor to the crash of 83, although it's not the lone reason, like many claim. Is it an awful game? Definitely. But is it the worst game of all time? Nah, there are definitely worse. Just play karate and tell me that it's better than E.T.